Hey there, welcome back to Bambi TV. If you're new here, please like, like, share, and subscribe. Guys, so we'll be checking out Ahmed Didat and Sammy Queen. Just, I feel it's a debate, and I know this is going to be epic. Guys, if you want to support this channel, make sure you get us a coffee. And you can leave a recommendation when you do so, guys. It will be much appreciated. Guys, let's get straight into this. Nineteen ninety six. I wasn't born. Yes, my son. Hello, everyone. How are you? Um, all right. First of all, I just want to say you were referring to many of us Caucasians as Englishmen. Um, I've been here for two hundred years. I'm Australian, so I'm not an Englishman. That's just one other point there. So I don't freak out too much over that. Uh, second one was. Uh, just, just one second. This might entertain you. You see, me, I'm a brown Englishman. In other words, I speak English. English is my mother tongue. You understand? In other words, I, 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 I dream in English and I swear in English. And, no, no, the, and the psychologists, they say that the language in which you dream and the language in which you swear is your mother tongue. You Indonesian? You say Indonesian? Okay. I say, in what language do you dream? In Dutch, if you're dreaming in Dutch, you know, no, the Dutch ruled you for 300 years. Maybe, you know, you got some Dutch blood in you. So I said, you speak, you, you, you dream in Dutch? He said, yes. And you swear in Dutch? He said, yeah. I said, that's your mother tongue. You are ashamed to say that, but that's your mother Me, me, I dream in English and I swear in English. So English is my mother tongue. So I'm a brown Englishman. So from that point of view, when I said Englishmen, English-speaking people, whether you are American, I say you are an Englishman, English-speaking person. From the language point of view, I'm describing the people, Englishmen. I guess that if you're saying that you're an Englishman, then I must be. No, I'm a brown Englishman. <laughs> right. Um, first of all, just with the... Uh, we were looking tonight at Matthew chapter 12 and the sign of Jonah. And you quite rightly pointed out that, that there were some things in Jonah which are similar to Jesus and some things which are different. Um, for instance, Jesus is crucified while Jonah is thrown in the sea. That, that's different. Uh, there's a very big difference in that Jonah is disobedient and runs away while Jesus is obedient. So that's a fairly big difference. And our one is Jonah goes to the Gentiles, the, the foreign countries, while uh, Jesus does his ministry within Israel. So there are a few differences. Um, but and, and you quite rightly correct, pointed out that the, the significance with the Jonah event is on time, on the three days. Um, as a, like I read the Bible uh, all the time. I've actually spent part of my holidays I read the Quran, and so I, I take the scriptures very seriously. But I know that in order to get the full picture of something, you have to read all of it. You have to read the whole book. So I, I just want to read a bit more of Matthew, where Jesus speaks again about the three days. This is just, just from, uh, this is from a translation of the Bible called the NIV. It's Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. And it says, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And so uh, I think when you read all of it, it is saying that the three days I'm going to die. There are, I've got some other references up here as well as to those, but they're all fairly similar where they talk about Jesus dying. Um, I just want to know what you say that, because there are many verses in the Bible, I don't know how much time I want to take up here, but where Jesus says, you know, I, I did die. No, my son, you yeah. have to agree with me that what Jesus was talking about, the sign of Jonah, that sign was a miracle. Sign means a miracle. You have to, it's not a road sign. Stop, yield, go. It's not a it's road sign. There were no road signs in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. So he's not talking about road signs. He's talking about a miracle. The Jews want a miracle from him. Not a road sign. So Jesus said, my miracle is that of Jonah. And then what the miraculous thing about Jonah is that we expect him to die three times over and he didn't die. You see, if I had a gun and I lose my temper and put six shots through you, through your heart, and it is shattered and you die, is that a miracle? Is that? But 
those six shots tearing your heart to pieces and you laugh. <laughs> it's a miracle. Yes, yes, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Six bullets I put through your heart and you still laugh. <laughs> That's a miracle. I'll be terrified of you. Do you know that? Yeah. If that happened, I'll be terrified of you. <laughs> so, Jesus is talking that, look, the miracle mine is that of Jonah. What happened to him is going to happen to me. What happened to Jonah? We expect him to die. We expect him to die at every step. If he died, it's not a miracle. Jesus, if what they tell us about him, he also is supposed to die. He is expected to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. If he died, what they did to him, and if he died, it's not a miracle. If he didn't die, it's a miracle. So I'm asking, he said, I will be like Jonah. Jonah is alive, you agreed, and Jesus is dead. And that is in your language of the Englishman, it is unlike. In Zulu, I'm asking the Zulus, Goguba Jengo Jonah. He said, just like Jonah. So I'm asking the Zulu, is this Jengo Jonah or Ngai Jengo Jonah? Is this like Jonah or unlike Jonah? And they say it's unlike Jonah. I'm asking the Afrikaner, one suas Jonah. You know, like Jonah, suas Jonah. I'm asking the Afrikaner, is this suas Jonah or ni suas Jonah? In Arabic, he says, Ya muallimu nuridu an nara min ka ayatan. For ajaba wa kala lahum. Jilun shirirun wa fasikun. Very strong. In Arabic, this statement of Jesus is very, very strong compared to the English. He says, Jilun, this is, the Bible is written by the Christian, by the way, not me. Jilun shirirun wa fasikun yatlubu ayatan. Wala tuta lahu ayata. Illa ayata. Yunan al nabiyu. Li annahu kama kana yunanu fi batn al huti. Thalasa tayyamin wa thalasa layalin. Hakaza. The word I was looking for was hakaza, just like that. So I'm asking the Arab Christian, is this hakaza or la hakaza? Jesus and Jonah, is it Hakaza, just like that, or La Hakaza? He said, no, it's La Hakaza. So, come on, you prove now that this statement is, 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 is a revelation from God. The Holy Ghost inspired Matthew to, to write it down. Then it is proving that Jesus is a, if I was a Jew, I'll never accept Jesus. As a Muslim, I believe in Jesus as the Messiah, one of the mightiest messengers, as a Muslim. But as a Jew, I said, look, this man was put to the test and he failed again and again, he's failing. According to the test that he himself lays on himself, he is a failure, he is an imposter. And as an imposter, we killed him. I would have said that if I was a Jew. But as a Muslim, I say, I believe that he was a true messenger of God and you have misunderstood everything. You have misunderstood. May I just say something up on that? You are right. If you were to shoot me six times through the heart, right. and I was just still standing here, that would be a miracle. Of course. But if you were to shoot me six times through the heart and I was to die, be buried, and then I came back to life, that would also be a miracle. Right. Right. So it but still can be a miracle. First, first we have to say that you were dead. Yeah. First, first, first. If I was shot six times through the heart, I would be dead. That's no, no. That's what is assumed now. Now Jesus, look, three days, three days after his alleged crucifixion. He goes to that upper room where they had the Last Supper. I'm giving you another proof that the man didn't die. Proof from his own mouth. He goes to that upper room where they had the Last Supper. And he goes in and he wishes his disciples in the Hebrew language, Shalom Aleichum. Same as Salam Aleichum. We say Salam Aleichum, the Jews say Shalom Aleichum. Mm -hmm. Same, means peace be unto you. And when he said Shalom Aleichum, his disciples were terrified. I'm reading your John, that the disciples were petrified, terrified. So I'm asking, why would they be terrified? Because when you meet your long lost master, your grandfather, your teacher, your guru, your prophet, your messiah, the Arab and the Jew will embrace one another and that is his way. The Arab and the Jew. <laughs> but instead of doing that, they're terrified. So I'm asking, why were they terrified? So Luke chapter 24, he gives the answer. That they were affrighted because they thought he was a spirit. Am I quoting correctly? Are you people who know the Bible, am I quoting correctly? Yes. Correct me. If I'm misquoting, you must correct me. Yes, yes, I know. I can't afford to make a mistake. Yes. <laughs> 
So I said, why would they think? And they thought, they thought he was a, a spirit. So I'm asking, did he look like a spirit? Did he look like a spirit? And everybody says, no. Then I said, why should they think the man is a spirit when he didn't look like one? The Christian is puzzled. Why would they say that they thought he was a spirit when he didn't look like a spirit? So I said, look, I'll help you. I'll help you. You see, the disciples of Jesus, they had heard from hearsay people talking that the master was hanged on the cross. They had heard from hearsay people talking that he had given up the ghost, meaning his spirit had come out, he had died. They had heard from hearsay people talking that now he's dead and buried for three days. All that knowledge was from hearsay people talking. Because Mark chapter 14 verse 50, he tells us that at the most critical juncture in the life of Jesus, all his disciples forsook him and fled. All. So I'm asking the brown Englishman and the white Englishman, Sir, does all mean all in your language? Hmm? Does all, does it mean all in your language? Of course, all means all. All means all. So, they were not there. They were not eyewitnesses or your witnesses to the happening. They all had forsook him. That's what the ma Mark tells, unless he's lying. You tell me he was a lying. His Holy Ghost had deceived him too. He said, all his disciples forsook him and fled. So they were not eyewitnesses or your witness to the happenings. So they had heard that man is dead and buried. They expect him to be stinking in his grave. Such a person you see, naturally you are terrified. You see, he must be a ghost, a spook. So Jesus wants to assure them that is not what they are thinking. So he said, Unzuru ila yadayya Behold my hands and my feet. Inni ana huwa, that it is I myself. Hussuni wanzuru, he said, handle me and see. For inna ruha laysa lahu lahmun wa izamun. For the spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. So again I'm talking, my dear brother, you Arab Christian and you English Christians. I said, if I said, look, because I got flesh and bones, I'm not a spirit, I'm not a ghost, I'm not a spook. Is that what it means in your language? If I got flesh and bones, in that case, I'm not a spirit, I'm not a ghost, I'm not a spook. Is that what it means in your language? Of course it does. If you got flesh and bones, you're not a spirit, you're not a ghost, you're not a spook. Anybody. If you got this, then you're not that. In other words, he's telling you that the body that you're seeing is not a translated body, it is not a metamorphosed body, it is not a resurrected body. Because the resurrected bodies get spiritualized. You want to know who says so? I said, you're Paul. You say, who says so? I say, you're Jesus. You want reference? I give them to you. Come, can bring your bishops and your archbishops to come and have a dialogue with me. In, in, in Sydney, I come again by God at my own expense, I will come. Get me a bishop or an archbishop and we have a symposium, not a debate, a symposium. Present your case and let me present our case and let the people go and make the choice. So, he said, handle me and see. Tengokla, tanganku, dankakiku, inila ku sendiri, jamahala ku dan lihatla, karena hantu tira berdaging dan tulang, seperti yang kamu lihat ada padaku. <laughs> so they felt him. I'm reading, I'm reading your Bible. And they felt him. And they believed not for joy. It means they were overjoyed and wondered. So what happened, man? We thought the man was dead and buried. So he says, Aindakum hahuna ta'am. Have you got here anything to eat? For now, waluhu juz min samakin, wa shay'an min shahadi asalin, fa akhaza wa akala kuddamahum. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. And he took it and he ate in the very side to prove what? That is a ghost. Is that how you prove you are a ghost? You are a spook? Huh? You are eating broiled fish and honeycomb. They're feeling you. And they say, no. The one that said, man, I thought the man was dead. He's alive. Hooray. He's alive. And eating broiled fish and honeycomb to prove what? He's a ghost. He's a spook. Man, every verse that I can quote you from the Bible, I said, every verse you have misunderstood, my brothers. You Englishmen, you brown Englishmen, and you white Englishmen, whether you call yourself American, you speak English, you are an Englishman. And I want to say, come, talk to me. In English. Talk to me in English. 
And I show you that each and every verse you have misunderstood. Every verse you have misunderstood, my son. Okay, my son. Thank you, my son. Yes, my son. Guys, with all of this, and I can say that let's take Lazarus for instance. When Jesus was wicked Lazarus, he came out from the grave. He wasn't stinking. He was strong and alive. Like right? he was healthy and strong. He was resurrected. So I said, I, I, I think I was something like this in my last video. I was like, I still said the same thing now. When, like, if the disciples, when they saw Jesus, they're supposed to be afraid. Based on the fact that they have heard that he died. So any normal thinking human being will be scared because you're seeing someone that you had information that he died. So I'm supposed to be scared, like, chill, are you real? So like Jesus made them know that, oh, I am real, like I am me. There's nothing wrong with me, I am me. Okay, I don't feel the his tomb is fake because Jesus' tomb is still there to date. I see I don't think all these things are fake like it never happened the cross where jesus was the cross or the place where jesus was crucified is still dead to date so i really can see that this historical event never took place it's not even about there were a lot of witnesses and a lot of people said so it's not just the apostles like the apostles got this information from people, even Pete, I think Peter, yes. Jesus said he would deny him three times before the cock crow, and he did. So all these things happened. I don't know, I don't know. Like, I, I find it difficult when, like, I did that say this kind of thing. It's more like he's trying to say that it never happened the disciples just wrote rubbish down like i i don't know how he is saying it because this is something that have been passed on from decades to decades to decades centuries like the bible have been dead one of the oldest book that exists like you guys tell me what you think about this like share subscribe my channel i'll see you next time guys